Hi, my name is Andrew from Gage, and today I'm going to show you a 16-channel Octopus CompuScope system that consists of actually two 8-channel Octopus cards. We're going to be focusing specifically on demonstrating simultaneity of signal acquisition across the two different cards and upon rapid uh, repetitive acquisition. Here's a gauge system operating from a host laptop computer. The two Octopus cards, two eight-channel Octopus cards, are located in this PCI Express bus expander unit. Um, the expander unit works such that the slots logically appear as if they were in this laptop computer, even though they aren't. Um, notice also that this is GageScope, our flagship uh, oscilloscope software. Notice that the two eight-channel cards are presented as a 16-channel CompuScope system. We can see sine waves on uh, four out of the 16 channels. Here we see a magnified view of the bus expander unit. We can see that there's a couple of PCI Express slots. In fact, those Express slots appear as if they were logically inside the host laptop, even though they aren't. Now if I go around back of the bus expander unit here, we will see the back bracket of the octopus cards. We can see here there's eight channels on both of the two octopus cards, and then there's four auxiliary inputs at the bottom, one of which is used for the external trigger input. You can see that I've just got two inputs activated on each card, on channels one and five of each card. The two octopus cards are synchronized with this master-slave multi-card bridge board that connects the two of them so that they share sampling, triggering, and reset signals. You might be able to see some of the serpentine uh, traces here that make sure that certain signals uh, have equal propagation times, signal propagation times from one card to the other. The signals for the octopus cards will be generated by a high-speed function generator. This signal enters this one-to-force RF splitter right here that reproduces the signals four times and then four identical signals come out the four outputs. These four signals are relayed to the octopus cards along strictly equal length cables. Here we're showing the four active channels from the octopus cards. Uh, we're sampling at the maximum for these cards at 25 me uh, mega samples per second and we're showing the waveforms on a 50 nanosecond per division time scale. The ensemble of waveforms moves around but if I stop it I can just take single shot waveforms and see that the simultaneity across the various channels even on different cards is excellent. In fact it looks to me to, that the simultaneity between channels on the same card, uh, such as channel 1 and 5, are just as simultaneous as across two cards, like comparing, say, channels 1 and 9. In order to uh, demonstrate the repetitive acquisition uh, capability of the Octopus card, I'm going to generate this very sp uh, specialized waveform uh, for the uh, Octopus copyscopes. What I've got here is a little waveform that changes every, on every trigger. Every trigger it changes polarity as you can see. What it also does, oops I was going forward now I'll go backwards, is jump by 60 microseconds. Okay, 60 microseconds is what it jumps by from one to the next. Remember that number because I'll show it to you in a second. Here we see those same waveforms I was generating with the generator card being acquired by the octopus pair. Uh, you can see that we're triggering off the large pulse but then the little trailing pulses are jumping all around the place. Now if I put uh, this display in persistence so we don't erase anything we should see the uh, waveforms build up. Ten of them as I said before. Furthermore, if we measure the time across them, we should see uh, 60 microseconds, as I said before. Here we've put cursors around the 10 little pulses. Uh, so we would expect that there would be 9 separations between 10 pulses, 9 separations of 60 microseconds. So we would expect to see 540 microsecond separation. And there you see 542, which is certainly consistent with 540 microseconds. If we don't put persistence on, we can see here that the little trailing pulse flips its polarity every other time. It also moves to the right with each successive acquisition, 
and this, as I said, we've already shown, moves by 60 microseconds. Notice that the triggers, the big pulses on which we're triggering on, are about two divisions wide. Uh, since we're on the 500 microsecond per division uh, scale, this corresponds to about one, a little more than one uh, millisecond. Here we've backed off the number of points that we take after each trigger uh, so that we just marginally see the next trigger. We've been able to do that with around 25,600 uh, points. So what I'm going to do uh, is back the depth off now to 25,000 so that we don't get that next trigger, but we just miss it, okay? So that's leaving about 600 points, which corresponds to about 25 microseconds, far more than the card needs to rearm itself. Now we're going to perform a multiple record acquisition of 20 records in which uh, the 20 records will be stacked in the card's onboard memory with lightning fast hardware rearm between the two. So I press go and now I can actually using these VCR buttons I can actually play through the waveforms like a VCR and we can see indeed that the waveforms are flipping polarity every time and the span, the extent of which they're running is as before that same 540 microseconds which corresponds to the same uh, 9 um, 60 microsecond intervals. I put persistence on it that same pattern will build up as before with the 60 microseconds separating as before. So really this uh, demonstration has proven that, that our Octopus card is able to acquire, um, without missing triggers, multiple waveforms with a very short rearm between each acquisition.